Oh, hi everyone. I'm just jumping on a little bit early so I can make sure everything's working properly. So good afternoon, good morning if you're on the West Coast. Um, let's see. Oh, it's looking good. Okay, volume's turned down. Okay. Oh, I've got more Valentine's Day projects for everybody. Okay. Lots of exciting things happening at Stampin' Up. So, if you haven't had a chance yet, uh, you can, after we're done here, you can head over to my, my site, thejoyfulstamper.com, and every Tuesday I post all kinds of updates and things that are going on in the Stampin' Up! world new things, tips and tricks, that kind of thing. But I'm actually going to be starting a newsletter here soon. So, and that's going to replace the Tuesday updates on my blog. So, all right, well, it's 2.01. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So welcome. Welcome to the Joyful Stampers Happy Half Hour Live Show. Uh, give or take a half hour. Sometimes I go over just depends. But I'm so glad you're here today, whether you're watching live or whether you are watching the replay that I upload to YouTube or that's here on face my Facebook business page. I'm Nicole Steele. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I love what I do. This is my full-time job and paper crafting is my passion and I love sharing it and teaching it to others. So today, I have two Valentine's Day projects for you. I did a couple Valentine's Day projects a couple weeks ago, and I saw two more ideas from two other demonstrators, and I changed them to make them my own, and I thought, I have to share them on my live. I have to share them on my live. So before we get started with that, though, I like to keep you updated and in the know about what is going on here on my weekly Facebook live show. So let me pull out the things that are going on in the Stampin' Up! world. First up, we have a new paper pumpkin kit that's coming out. This is the February kit. It's called A Lovely Day, and it features birthdays. So everybody has a birthday. There's always a need to send a birthday card. So the paper pumpkin kit is going to have the stamp sets, a stamp set that is birthday themed, and this is the color scheme here. When they do their, their ad or their graphic, they it's always a little teaser. Oh, I have to turn the light on here. Um, it's always a little teaser for what the next month's kit's going to be. You have to sign up by the 10th of the month. So to get the February kit, you'd want to sign up by February 10th. And you can go to my site, um, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net to sign up for that. And the neat thing about the February kit is Stampin' Up! designed it to coordinate with the Happy Birthday to You stamp set in the Celebration brochure. And I don't, have you seen the Celebration brochure? If not, you can email me and I will send one out to you. But that Happy Birthday to You stamp set is this set right here. So February's Paper Pumpkin Kit is going to coordinate with this stamp set and you get this one for free. But here's an idea for you. If you go, if you order a prepaid subscription for Paper Pumpkin, you can prepay for three months, you can prepay for six months, or even 12 months. But even if you just prepay for the three month one, that would qualify you to earn this stamp set for free. So you get the Paper Pumpkin kit and you have the coordinating stamp set that goes with the February kit and you can double the amount of projects that you can make with it. That's a great idea. I think that's great as Stampin' Up! to do it. I like when they coordinate things like that because it just means you get more mileage out of these kits. So that is going on. Then another thing that's happening is February 4th. Stampin' Up! is bringing out products that coordinate with what I just showed you in that celebration catalog, plus additional products too in the mini catalog. So if you're a demonstrator, you've been able to pre-order this now. But they're coming out with these dies. So there's Nature's Thoughts dies, and it goes with the Positive Thoughts stamp set that's in the mini catalog. Special Day dies, it goes with uh, someone special set in the mini catalog, which are these cute little squirrels and raccoons and other critters. 
the ladybugs dies this stamp set has been a huge hit and you can only get it for free during celebration and now Stampin' Up! on February 4th is coming out with dies that will cut out the images in that little ladybug stamp set. Then you have the Sending Flowers dies, which coordinates with the Sending You Thoughts celebration stamp set, which I have that one, and it's a bunch of different sentiments. Get well, congratulations, thank you, birthday. And this die set that coordinates with it just ups the, the wow factor of what you can do with that set. That's not all, though. They've got more. The birthday dies. These dies go with that birthday stamp set I just showed you that also goes with the February paper pumpkin kit. One of Stampin' Up! strong points is coordination. And this is reflected in this alone. So get the prepaid paper pumpkin subscription. Oh, hi, Clarissa. Um, you earn the happy birthday to you stamp set for free, and then you can get these dies on February 4th that will cut these images out. So if you don't like to fussy cut, these are good. And then they're coming out with 12 by 12 pack of designer series paper called Please Just Punch. And the images in this 12 by 12 paper can be used with four of our punches. So the umbrella builder punch will punch out those umbrellas. Our heart punch pack, which I'm gonna use it today, We'll punch out these hearts. The small blossom punch, which is a free item within the celebration catalog, punches out those little flowers. And then the tulip builder punch from the mini catalog punches out the tulips on that paper. So this is all going to be available February 4th to customers. Or if you sign up on my Joyful Stamper team now, you can order this stuff now. That's one of the perks of being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. You get to order these things before the customers do. Plus, you get to be on my team. And it's a really good deal. So that is what's going on in the Stampin' Up! world. And if you don't have a mini catalog or a celebration catalog, let me know. Just email me, Nicole at thejoyfulstamper.com, and I can get a free catalog package out to you. These are stunning. These are my favorite catalogs in the 20 years I've been using Stampin' Up, so they're really something special. And I just dropped my pen somewhere. Mm. Well, I don't know where it went, but good thing I've got more around here. So, okay, I'm going to jump right into the project today, and I'm going to start with this cute little Ghirardelli chocolate holder box. I saw this when I went to the Las Vegas convention um, called On Stage back in November, and it was done using the Peaceful Poppy Suite, but I changed it to make it Valentine's Day themed because, yeah, we give chocolate at Valentine's Day, or at least I do. I'm always passing out little treat holders, and I thought this was adorable, and it's meant to hold Ghiri, those Ghirardelli individual chocolate squares. I will untie it and you can take a peek at the inside. I don't have any Ghirardelli chocolate in here because I did not get to the store to buy any, but it doesn't even have to be Ghirardelli chocolate. Can you see that? It's super cute. Um, I'm not sure what the dimensions are in terms of the space inside it. Let's see. Uh, it's a two inch square. And it's one and three quarters inch high. So it's just big enough that you can put something really cute, really yummy in there without breaking the bank by spending a fortune on candy, right? So this would be good for like a classroom treat if your kids have Valentine's Day parties. I mean, we were always making them when my kids were little. But alas, they do not have Valentine's parties anymore. So let's get started with, let me grab my supplies here. And I have my template so that I remember the measurements and don't forget. Now you're going to need to score a piece of basic black cardstock. That's going to be the box that goes on the inside of our project. And that piece is five and a half inches by three inches. But you don't need to worry about writing these measurements down because I have a project sheet that I made for you. And I'm going to post it when I am done here. So there's no need to remember it. So five and it's five and a half inches by three inches. And we are gonna score it on the long side. So the long side, the five and a half inch side goes to the top of your scoreboard. We're gonna score it at one and three quarters of an inch. And we're gonna score it again at three and three quarters of an inch. I always have to double check because I don't I'm just 
I'm good at math, <laughs> but when it comes to talking and doing something else at the same time, I kind of stink at that. And I have to think really hard. So then I turn the paper and on the short side now, we're gonna score at half an inch and we're gonna score at two and a half inches. And that's gonna be the box that goes on the inside. And while I have my, I'm sorry, my dog is barking. Lily, 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 hush. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of From My Heart designer series paper and this is two inches by ten and a half inches. I don't know what she's barking or growling at because there is nothing up there. And I'm going to score this on the long side. And there's a lot of measurements here, but again, I'll have them written down on the project measurement sheet. I'm gonna score it at one and a quarter inch using my bone folder here, two and a quarter inches, four and a quarter inches, six and a quarter, eight and a quarter, and nine and a quarter. Okay, and that's all the scoring that needs to be done for this particular project. Okay. So we've got those two pieces. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this scalloped tag topper punch. And this is found in Stampin' Up's annual catalog, the big one. And I'm going to punch both ends of this designer series paper. Now when you use the tag top, the scalloped tag topper punch, your paper can only can be anywhere from uh, you know like one to two inches wide. It can't be more than two inches wide because it has to be able to slide into the punch here. So just slide your paper in, press down, and it'll make like a tag topper. We're gonna turn it around and we're gonna punch the other end. Get those pieces out of the way. Okay. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this, this so that I can fold it. So this is, remember, this is the five and a half inch side. This is the three inch side. I have little score lines right there. I'm gonna cut just up to where those two score lines intersect, Lily. Hopefully you have dogs and you can understand. My little dog has little dog syndrome. Then you're gonna take your bone folder and just give a good crease on those score lines. We wanna be able to fold this box nice and easy. So I'm gonna use my bone folder to make sure that those score lines or those fold lines are nice and sharp. Okay, there we go, that's folded. And then this box gets folded, but if you notice here, it's, it goes the opposite way at the top here. So it's gonna form that shape. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, I'm gonna fold there, and fold there, and fold there and fold there and now these two topmost score lines are going to go the opposite way of what I have been folding so that it will form a square and be able to be closed just like that you can see that okay now we're going to adhere our box to this right here and for that I'm going to use a roll of tear and tape Anytime I make a 3D project like this, I like to use tear and tape. Let me get my template so I can be sure I put the, the adhesive in the right spot. I like to use tear and tape because it has a super, super strong hold. Now with that being said, once you stick it down, it is stuck. There is no repositioning it. If you try to reposition it, you will tear your paper. But on the other hand, when you put something together using this, it is going to stay. And that is why it is the best choice for making 3D projects like this. Okay, so I'm gonna work with one side at a time. Our box is gonna get folded like this. So I'm gonna work with one side at a time because if I found when I made this, I removed all the liner tape at one time from both sides and then when I was trying to stick this one on, this one was getting stuck to my scrap paper and it was just, it was a mess. So I'm going to peel the liner off just one side at a time. Okay. And guys, don't forget to share this video. I, if you share the video, 
and then you type shared in the comments. I have a pack of cards that I can send. Um, I'm going to draw a name and the person's name who I draw will get a pack of cards for me as a thank you for sharing because it really, really helps me a lot. But make sure when you sh after you share that you type shared in the comments because I have found that Facebook does not always let me see who shares. Some people have their privacy settings on and, and I want to be able to put your name in the drawing, so that's why um, just type shared in the comments after you have done you're done sharing this video. And thank you, because I really, really appreciate it. It helps me so much. Okay, so then I have the liner pulled off of just the one side, and I'm going to stick the sides up like this. Okay, and then I'm going to press that to the front of this box here. All right, so I have it sitting there and I'm just gonna fold the top of my box up just like that. And you might be able to reposition it a little bit. I was just a hair off, but if you don't press too hard the initial time, you will have time to set it. So there, now I'm giving it a good press because I've got it in there. And the sides of this box are what you want to be visible. All right, now we're gonna do the other side. And I'm going to pull the liner tape off here. Uh, I don't know if you read my blog regularly, but I have been watching a ton of movies lately. And that is so unusual for me because I'm a reader. I'm not a movie watcher. But there's been a lot of good films out. I saw Spies in Disguise. I saw Little Women. I saw The Maze Runner, The Scorch Trials, I saw 1917, and I was really worried that 1917, because it's, you know, World War I movie, it was going to be a little gory and violent, but it wasn't. It really wasn't, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like a tearjerker either. I don't go for tearjerking movies, like, I don't want to cry when I go to the movie, but I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed all those movies, so... I'm hooked on movies again. Now I can't wait to see the third one in that Maze Runner series. I might have to go read those books. Okay, so now we have this the box put together. But we need, as pretty as this paper is, we need to decorate it. We need to decorate it. So, I'm going to take some scrap pieces. And people, save your scraps. My storage system, I have my cardstock organized by color. So each... Uh, paper slot has its own Stampin' Up! color and I keep a page protector with each color and all the paper scraps for that particular color go in the page protector and that way every time I go to make something I grab the page protector with all the scraps first. I almost never have to cut into a full sheet of cardstock. It saves me so much paper and it keeps my scraps down to a minimum because if you're a paper crafter you know they can get out of control really fast. And then you don't want to throw them out because you don't like to waste anything. And yeah, that's just how it goes. But that's a system that really, really has worked well for me. Okay, so I'm going to emboss a heart on this red piece or this piece of real red cardstock. And I'm using this as an embossing buddy. And I'm rubbing it on the cardstock because I want to take away any static that might be there, especially in this dry winter air, that might cause my embossing powder to stick to places I don't want it to stick to. We are going to use a Versamark ink pad since we are going to heat emboss. This is a clear, sticky ink that takes a little bit longer to dry. And we want it to be a little slower drying because we want time to sprinkle on our embossing powder. And I'm going to use white Stampin' Embossing Powder. I buy jars of it and I dump it into a Ziploc container so that I can just pick it up and spoon it on and dump it right back into the container. Very, very easy. And then always put your lid back on because, ask me how I know, you turn the heat gun on and it flies everywhere. So close everything up. It's going to get loud because I'm going to turn the heat gun on. Gotta let it warm up for a few seconds so it gets nice and hot. We want it to melt this, this powder. Right now the embossing powder is a little granular, a little sticky. When I apply the heat to it, it's going to melt it and it's become a, going to become smooth and shiny. Which it is doing right now. There we go. Okay, 
That's a really nice heart image there. Then I'm also going to do the same thing on this um, piece of basic black cardstock. I am going to take the Love You Lot sentiment, and I forgot to show you what set this is from. These stamps are all from the Heartfelt set that's in the Stampin' Up! mini catalog. So I just used this one, and now I'm going to use Love You Lots. And just as a side note, the Heart Punch Pack that coordinates with this set punches out this heart, this heart, and this scalloped heart right here too. And you can also use it just to punch out pieces of, you know, pattern paper, designer series paper, um, to make pretty decorative hearts. Okay, I had some embossing powder sprinkled on there. And again, I'm going to use a Versamark pad, and I'm going to ink up Love You Lots. And I'm going to stamp it right in the middle there. Now this is going to get fussy cut out. So when I say fussy cut, what do I mean? I mean I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to trim around it. There is no die for that. Um, there's no punch to cut this out. But I like fussy cutting. Ooh, paper powder flying everywhere. <laughs> Who says stamping isn't exciting? Oh, there it goes again. They don't know what they're talking about. All right. Crafting ain't fun unless you're making a mess, right? All right, we're gonna heat this up again and get it to melt. I just wanna make sure though that I don't put the heat on the powder that's on my desk, otherwise I'm gonna have embossing powder melt it to my desk. Okay. So we got that taken care of. And I'm gonna grab my heart punch. These are the two punches that coordinate with that stamp set that I, uh, that I just showed you with Heartfelt. I'm going to use the scalloped one in the next project, but for this one, I'm just going to use this really cute chubby heart. I love it. And just slide your cardstock right into that punch and give it a squeeze. And there we have our piece. Okay. Then for this one, I'm going to fussy cut this out. And... It doesn't have to be perfect. Get a pair of really good, short, sharp scissors like these paper snips. They're only 10 bucks. A really affordable investment in your, in, um, a really affordable tool to have in your crafting arsenal. And turn the paper as you cut. Don't turn the scissors. You'll get a much smoother cut that way and you'll be able to follow the outline a lot better. But you can see that I'm not I'm not worried about getting in every little nook and cranny here. I just want the general outline of that, just like that. Okay, so we've got those pieces there, and I've got the heart, and now we're gonna assemble everything together, and we're gonna use some from my heart faceted gems also. I got embossing powder even on this. Look at that. <laughs> it really went everywhere when I bumped the container. Okay. Using some liquid glue to apply the heart to the front of the box. Make sure if you're using directional pattern paper that you are mindful of where, what side you're gluing your pieces on. Because for instance, see if I glued onto this side, my hearts would be upside down and that's what people would be looking at. So, but some, some pattern papers, it doesn't, uh, that doesn't matter. All right, let's put some liquid glue on the back of that. Oh, my bottle must be near the end. Okay. All right. So, and if you're going to give this to somebody that's maybe a love you lots is not the most appropriate uh, greeting for them, you, there was ones in there, this heartfelt set says, from my heart to yours. So lucky to have a friend like you. So it, you know, it doesn't. It could be a friend. It doesn't have to be somebody that you love. You know what I'm saying? So then I'm gonna take my fine tip glue and twist the top off. And I'm gonna put some of these from my heart faceted gems onto here. And I'm gonna take um, just a little dab of glue there, and I'm gonna stick down. One of the larger gems. And I'm going to put down these teeny, 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 tiny ones. And I'm going to drop that on there. There we go. And I'll put another one over there maybe. Let's see. Ah, uh, that looks good. 
Now, if you'll notice in my original, I have um, some of the real red double stitched satin ribbon there. That's also part of this product suite, but I ran out. I used my entire spool of it, which oddly enough, I find very satisfying when I use up products. It just, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I find it very satisfying. But I have, you can leave this off and just tie the top with this crinkled um, Whisper White seam binding ribbon. So just take some of this, just string it through, string it through, and I'm not even going to tie it into a bow. I'm just going to tie it in a knot. Because we like things to be easy. Especially when you're making uh, a lot of these, which you might be doing depending on who you're giving them to. Some projects I do like things to be more complicated. So the other day on my Facebook page, I maybe it was yesterday, I posted a card I made where I used my stamp and blends to color um, the breathtaking bouquet sweet, uh, stamp set, and that did take a while, but I loved it. It was so relaxing. It was so relaxing. But for something like this, I just I just want to make it. So trim that. Get rid of the excess. So that was the Whisper White Crinkled Seam Binding Room. You can see I'm almost out of this spool too. And there we have this, this both ways. All right, I untied this one. I don't know what I did with the ribbon. But you can see this paper was also from the From My Heart Design Specialty Designer Series paper pack, as was this one. So you can use different patterns. You can use different ribbons. You can leave it off of this giant heart like I did on this one. And you can fill it with some candy. Oh, there's the ribbon. You can fill it with some candy. It's super cute. I will post the project sheet for this one. I have one more project for you. And put this one aside and I'll move on to the next one. Now, I'm going to post the project sheet when I'm done here. And just remember that if you place a minimum $35 order before shipping and tax in my online shopping store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net, I will send you the project kits for free to make one of these boxes and to make the card. So basically the two projects I'm showing you today, I will send you the supplies um, to make them for free with a, your $35 minimum order. And that has to be placed by this Friday at midnight and use this host code that I have written here. Using this special host code, this reward code, lets me know that you want these project kits. There is a place on your shopping cart page to type in the host code. It says type in host code here. And also on my, um, my website, I actually took a screenshot of where you type in this reward code here. So, and just in case you have questions and you can always email me too, if you need help. So that was project number one. Project number two, this one came from a demonstrator. Um, his name was Brian King. And it's not an exact copy of his card, but what I really liked about his card was his, the arrows. And he had them going straight across in different directions. I ended up crisscrossing mine. But I loved the way that looked, and I thought, what a great idea. So I took it and made some tweaks to it, and this is what I came up with. So I have white and boxing that are seriously everywhere. <laughs> I think my cardstock flicked it out of the container when I had it in there. So now, <laughs> oh, it's embossing powder. In case anybody's watching and thinking otherwise, it is embossing powder. Nothing else. Okay, we are going to start with a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of flirty flamingo cardstock. And I scored it at the five and a half inch mark, which is exactly half of this. And I'm going to use my bone folder to give it a good crease. So that's our card base. Then uh, the next thing I'm going to do is do all of my stamping. So I'm going to get my pieces out here. I am working in a very tiny space. Actually, you know, some people, you see these pictures on the internet of people that have these big, beautiful craft rooms. I don't have that. I'm in a little corner of our family room, and I love it. I'm not complaining about it at all. But I have one desk. I have one desk, and I have to make use of that space. So I'm taking a Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad, and I'm inking up the arrow from that heartfelt stamp set. Ah, hi, Mike. Husband and wife are on here watching. That's great. You can craft together tonight, right? 
<laughs> All right, so ink that up good. And this is a super skinny strip of Whisper White cardstock. And I'm going to stamp it. i got to stand up so I can see. I'm going to stamp this arrow on that Whisper White piece. Okay. And I actually have five of these on my card. You can see that there. But for purposes of time, I stamped it once, and I'll show you how I cut it out. But I already went ahead and I cut out and stamped and cut out the other four here so that you didn't have to sit here and watch me go through all four of those. So I'm going to turn my paper down a little bit shorter so it's easier to handle. And I'm going to use my paper snips to get in close and cut this out. There we go. Okay. Now you don't have to cut these arrows out if you don't want to. You can leave them um, uncut on a skinny strip of paper. But I wanted five of them on my card. And so to get them all to fit, I had to cut them out by hand. All right. She's working on her craft room. Is Clarissa getting her own craft room in your house? Lucky girl. I know she likes a lot of different crafts. So we've got the five different arrows there. Next up, we're going to stamp this heart right here. And I'm going to show you this neat little trick that you can do with the stamp. So again, we have a Whisper White piece of cardstock. We are going to use a real red ink pad. And this stamp right here, Happy Valentine's Day, that's the stamp I'm going to use. But instead, I'm going to flip it over backwards and put it on my block. So instead of the normal stamping surface of this stamp facing up, so like, for instance, if I were to ink this up and stamp it, it would come out Happy Valentine's Day. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to use it backwards so that I'm using the completely smooth backside of this stamp. And I'm going to ink it up with real red ink and I've got to make sure that I don't have any of that stray embossing powder on it. If I do, I will just go ahead and clean it. And I'm going to go ahead and ink it up with my real red ink pad and stamp it right on this piece of Whisper White cardstock. There we go. So you get two different images from that one stamp just by flipping it over. All right, now we're going to grab the Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad again, and we're going to stamp from my heart to yours on the inside of that. And it helps if you have the stamp facing in the right direction so you don't stamp upside down. And I'm going to stamp that right in the middle of that. There we go. And then this time, instead of using the um, like the flat edged heart punch, I'm going to use the scalloped heart punch. That's part of that heart punch pack. Oh, it's been a work in progress. Yeah, I'm sure, Clarissa, you cannot wait to get your own craft room. It's like it's our happy place. And just get a punch, squeeze, and it'll punch right out. Right now. Our two other bedrooms are being used by our daughter, still by Caitlin and, um, and um, Elena. Emma's off at college. But when one of them is gone for good and we're down to just one kid permanently at home, I think I'm going to turn it into a craft room slash office for myself. Although I kind of like being in the family room because I like being with everybody as I am stamping. So I don't know. Double-edged sword, right? So now I have my Flirty Flamingo card base, and I'm going to layer on my basic black, a basic black mat, and I'm, this is also another pattern from, from my heart specialty designer series paper, and I'm going to put that on there. And then I use the Stitch So Sweetly dies to die cut a scallop stitched rectangle out of Flirty Flamingo cardstock. Those Stitch So Sweetly dies, I've showed them before, but there's different sizes of these rectangles and there's also four different stitched labels that are part of that too and they are so fun to layer and stack and in this case I'm just going to use it by itself but all those pieces are going to get layered onto my card here starting with the basic black 
and add a thin line of liquid adhesive and lay that down. And again, I will have all the measurements on my project sheet that I'm going to upload to this Facebook Live and to the YouTube video. And if you are just joining, whether live or in the replay, welcome. It's Nicole Steele of thejoyfulstamper.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator who loves, 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 loves to paper craft and to share that with others. I teach in-person classes. I do free Facebook Lives like this. I make YouTube videos. I have a website that I have free printable, downloadable tutorials that you can use and add to your uh, resource collection. And I just, I love this. And I've partnered with Stampin' Up! because I love the products that they have. They're high quality, they coordinate, they make crafting fun. So um, I've partnered with them to uh, offer those products in addition to teaching my classes. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue all these little arrows on. So I'm gonna bring back out my fine tip glue pen. A uh, matter of organization, yes. I will tell you, Clarissa, um, I have been using, there's a company called Stampin' Storage, and they make, he's a woodworker. So if you know a woodworker, somebody could do this for you too. But this woman's husband is a woodworker, and they started this company it's called Stampin' Storage. And they make um, storage pieces just for paper crafters. And I have bought a lot of them. Ribbon holders, paper holders, punch holders. Um, they have an ink pad holder that also holds your markers and ink refills. Um, they've got a bunch of other stuff too. Shelves. You could outfit your whole room like that. But I can't say enough good things about them. And you can paint them whatever color you want. So it can match your room. I didn't paint mine. I just left them... Um, just left them in the wood that they came in but I love their stuff so I don't get anything from recommending them I just really genuinely like stamp and storage oh and right now they're doing a 30-day organization challenge on their Facebook page so if you're in the organization stage um, you might like that every day they have you doing something a little bit different to help you get organized so I'm just adhering these arrows right now and they don't have to be laid down perfectly. I'm actually not thinking too hard about where I'm putting these because I don't want it to look too, um, I don't know, too thought out. I don't know. I find I, if I let myself, I overthink too much when I'm crafting. And then I don't like what I do. I'm, I'm so much happier with what I do whenever I just do it and I don't stop to think about it or analyze it. My glue isn't coming out here. I'm wondering if there's a little plug on it there. Um, okay, so I find out I'm happier if I just don't even stop to think about what I'm doing. I just do it. All right, so we'll put that last arrow down. And then I have some silver metallic twine. This stuff is super fine. And it's found in Stampin' Up's big annual catalog. I gotta put the cap back on this glue. Um, it's find, found in Stampin' Up's big annual catalog. And it is perfect for creating little thread nests on your project. So I'm taking some snail and I'm just gonna put a couple lines down right in the middle of my card here. And then I'm gonna take this silver metallic thread find the end of it there and I'm gonna wrap it around my fingers a few times we used to have it in gold too but I don't think they carry it in gold anymore it might just be silver so wrap it around a few times cut it and then just stick it down right where you put that line of snail and make sure you tuck the ends in so that they don't go flying around everywhere but it's meant to be this messy look, so you don't even have to play with it too much. You can just stick it right down. Now, this heart, I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals to put it on. Same, sometimes I just have to walk away because I get inside my own head. Yes, okay, so I am not alone. <laughs> I am not alone. 
sometimes I participate in these stamping challenges on Split Coast Stampers and where you have to make the card in an hour or less. And I they're called Virtual Stamp Night. I love them because I can't overthink it. There ain't no time. I just, I take the challenge and I run with it. Like they'll give you a starting point, you know, like maybe a color combination or use certain images. Then you got 45 minutes to make the card. And there is no second guessing yourself. And I am so happy with what I make when I do that. So why don't I learn and just stop going, does that sequin look right there? Or does it look better there? Because it just, it serves no purpose to do that. None at all. So, okay, back with the fine tip glue. I'm going to add some more faceted gems to this card because I can't get enough of these little beauties. They're so cute. They're so pretty. They're so glamorous. Whatever definition you want to give them, I love them. And I'm going to put a little bit of dab there and let me grab one of these little ones. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. And this one just flipped upside down on me. Let's see if I can get it to go the right way. Get my scissors here. Okay, there we go. Got it. I think it needs more. It needs more. I'm going to put another one up there. Um, let's see. Let's do a pink one. Okay, and then I had another one right there. I learned at the very beginning of my paper crafting session 20 years ago about des this design principle about things being in odd numbers. Like things are more pleasing to the eye when you do them in odd numbers. So like three, five, seven, nine, and not even numbers. So I always remember that whenever I go to add things like this, like did I do them in odd numbers? One, two, three, four, five, I did, so I'm good. I met the design principle. So okay, these are the projects from today. I hope you like them and remember if you place a $35 order by this Friday, with me at shopwithnicole.stampinup.net and that would be $35 before shipping and tax, I will send you the project kits to make this card and this Ghirardelli holder. Um, totally free. I'm going to put up a project sheet so you can see the supplies that I used for this and it'll have the dimensions for these pieces if you want to go ahead and recreate them on your own. But if you bump your order up to $50, you can pick something for free out of the celebration catalog. And there's paper packs in there, metallic and sequins, there's stamp sets. Um, if you bump it up to $100, there's a punch in it, some dies in there too. So this is a really, really good time of year to buy. If you need to stock up on your card stock, maybe your ink pads, try something new. This is the time of year to do it with Stampin' Up. And, um, also, please remember to share this video. Um, if you share it and you type shared in the comments, I will enter you in a drawing to win a free pack of handmade cards made by yours truly. So um, just remember, remember to share, and I thank you so, so much for doing that. That helps me so much. Um, but otherwise, that I think is it. I will upload this to YouTube and get the project sheet loaded. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I love this stuff. I love this stuff. You want to join my team, place an order, have a question about stamping technique, ask me. I live and breathe this. And my family's sick of hearing me talk about stamping, so I need to talk about it with somebody else. So, all right, guys. Thanks for joining me today. Have a wonderful Tuesday, and I will see you next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time right here. Bye.